Why, hello there. Interested in some Prussian landwehr, are you? Well, you came to the right place. Uh, this is the Prussian landwehr box for black powder. And if you're playing black powder, it's a regiment. If you're not playing black powder and doing a skirmish game, it's 20 odd troops and an officer. So it depends what you're doing. That works. Um, I really do like Napoleonic skirmishing. Um, problem is, you end up needing so many figures that you end up doing black powder instead because you just end up basing all the figures on big bases because you can't take all the little men running around. Yeah. Uh, which just always happens in 28mm games. Uh, so this is the black powder box. Uh, so just have a look at the back. And that's the regiment. And it's pretty cool. I will mention it says lead free on the side of the box. Which is surprising considering it has lead figures in it. So I don't know. The pewter? We, is that the way we're going now? <laughs> I'm not really sure. But anyway, uh, Prussian Landwehr Regiment. Uh, what were Landwehr? Uh, no idea. Alright, we'll get to that in a bit then. <laughs> Alright, we'll just unbox it now. Uh, right, now we have a nice little card. Um, okay. It actually tells you a bit about Landwehr on the back, but I'm just going to tell you what I think. I mean, you can read it yourself. Um, these are the Landwehr. This is the Landwehr sheet, and here has some flags for Landwehr. Oh God, sorry. Who are very much he meant thrown. He said, oh, God, yeah, it's yeah. thrown. Yes. Um, so, yes, we have some nice little flags there. Um, I tend to go for these guys. Um, you can actually use these for American Civil War as well. There were a few Union regiments who carried the German um, Iron Cross because they were Germans. And I love these. Do you? Wow. They're amazing. <laughs> You're looking forward to putting them together, are you? Right, we'll go for Oh my on. god. The throne. <laughs> throne. Ah. Throne. <laughs> In the Emperor's name. Right, so these are the guys. These are awesome, aren't they? They're amazing. <laughs> uh, these nice troops. Uh, they're not doing anything remotely interesting. They're just standing there, <laughs> which well, is just like the box. Chinese Prussian Landwehr tended to either stand there looking nice or run, running away. That's mainly what Landwehr were used for. Um, combat effectiveness um, kind of varied. Uh, you got some very nice heads. These heads are great. Why don't, that. why don't they do this for all of them? Every, no, seriously, why isn't every box like this? Oh, oh it's come amazing. On, come on, I guess. guess Right, there we go. We've got some awesome heads there. Like, honestly, I am I'm in love with these. We've got a great guy with a beard. And we've got a nice guy there. A nice guy with glasses on. Uh, he looks like a 40k commissar, that guy there. They're great. They, these are absolutely <laughs> brilliant. And, of course, we also have the uh, that helmet. That looks so much better than paper. Yes, it does. Um, those, um, uh, it depends what Landwehr regiment you're using. Uh, most wore the forage cap style hat. Uh, As on the box. Yeah, which was often uh, covered by a pre-plastic waterproof hat cover. I'm not sure what it was made out of, but it looked like plastic. Um, and they used to wrap them around around the cap to stop it from getting wet, because it was made of felt with a bit of cardboard holding it straight, so it used to get messy quite quick. Uh, so they used to put these little, little covers over them. Uh, oh, look at that guy. That's a seriously wounded guy right there. He's lost an eye. And that's another one. These heads are great. <laughs> these, these heads are just great. If we've got any spare, make sure we've got some spare. I want to use it for my Imperial Guard. Well, you can have like half spare on each sprue. Yeah, they're, they're great heads. I like them. Um, so let's, let's see. We've got five of these. And then we have this. Now, Let can I... Three. Yes. Can I please bring you back to this? Right, now, <laughs> put these two together in the same thought, and we'll move on. So, anyway, I'm just thinking they might actually be pewter, uh, pewter, 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 which is still lead. <laughs> oh, amazing. Look at that. I don't have to worry about and that anymore. <laughs> this guy's the best. You know what, we're just going to do landwehr from now on. That's it, <laughs> not only landwehr. We'll just get two German states to fight each other and just use loads of land wear. That's quite nice. I like them. They're good. They're, they're no assembly whatsoever. Just They're just great. Um, so, what were land wear? Not clue. Uh, land wear were volunteer... Well, 
depending which all right right germany wasn't a country back then it was uh, there was prussia these are prussian and then there were lots of other germanies lots of other tiny little countries like baden and stuff like that um in fact today baden is more or less semi-independent again <laughs> but um uh, lots of little, little countries and eat and all broken up into little towns and little so each city would have its own regiments and stuff and its own army technically and so that's what these guys were so these would be the leipzig regiment and they would go and uh march off to the prussian army and uh fight uh, i think generally they were volunteers not conscripts but some city states may have um well they weren't technically city states but some cities may have had um um conscription yeah um yeah which is very yeah. common especially in Europe well also mandate. it was handy to volunteer because you didn't have to be in the army unless France was invading you so you didn't have to be so for two weeks every three months you got to put your uniform on march up and down and all the pretty ladies would think you look good in your uniform and you got paid a few Deutsche marks extra so it, it was kind of good. I volunteer. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, but the problem is, and then Napoleon invades. No, oh, right. <laughs> so suddenly, those few extra marks and that nice crisp uniform will be um, not much use to you. Yeah. Uh, the marks, if you're lucky, will be sent to your widow, and the uniform will be buried with your body, with full of holes. Um, but yeah, I, don't know. I am. I am being a bit uh, critical. Morbid. Um, yeah, rather morbid. Uh, any able-bodied man aged 17 to 70 uh, could be called to serve in the Landwehr. As I said, um, you could, every country used conscription, but Germany did have standing Landwehr regiments, nothing to do with, with actually fighting wars. They're, they're, you need a standing militia. And they were very useful in, if there were riots going on, maybe the odd um, people who want to spread wealth a bit were running through the streets, uh, you would call out the Landwehr and they would support the police because you couldn't use the army because you're not supposed to use the army against your own people. Mm. Um, so the landway came in handy for that. Um, yeah. Uh, Britain, we just use the army. <laughs> we, we didn't have time for that sort of stuff. But then again, in Britain, you're never far away from a barracks. So, yeah, yeah there's, there's army barracks all over the country. Um, so generally, uh, we've got some nice ones here. If I show you these, um, that is a Westphalia Landwehr, that is a Pomerania Landwehr, and a guy from the Elbe. I will admit, out of all of the uh, Napoleonics I've done so far, um, none of them actually stand straight. This will be the first one that actually stands straight. Yeah. Because like, you get like one person that stands straight, but he's kind of slanted on purpose. Well, let's have a look. They're um, all stood straight. Look at that guy. There. Have you focus on him? Um, he's got no shoes on. Oh. Yeah, they weren't that well equipped, generally. Um, mostly you would be given a second-hand rifle that was used in the previous war, um, if you were Landwehr. You didn't get a brand new rifle. And if you did get a brand new rifle, then something had gone disastrously wrong. <laughs> because you're not supposed to get brand new equipment to land with troops. That's for the actual troops. Yeah, that's the real t that means you are now the actual yeah. army, yeah. The, the army's dead. Yeah. <laughs> and you have a couple of minutes to get ready. <laughs> yeah, and, and you can probably hear the sound of the French drums in the background yeah. <laughs> as he's running through the streets. Um, so, yeah, uh, generally you got yourself a coat and a pair of trousers, and that was about, and a hat, <laughs> that was about it. You had to supply everything else yourself. And so Gone. part of your wages would go to that. So that being said, the regular British army, all you got was your jacket, a shirt, trousers, and a hat. You had to buy your own boots. You had to buy your own um, undergarments and stuff. Uh, um, um, the stuff that got the, the, the over the over trousers that stop your trousers getting wet. You had to buy them yourself. You had to buy a cover for your rucksack. You got a knapsack. But you had to buy a, a cover for it, otherwise everything inside would get wet. The army didn't care. You could have to buy your own. So that King Shilling had to go quite a way before you began making a profit. Yeah. Um, and you had to look smart on parade, which meant you had to spend the money. You couldn't get away with it. Um, so, you know, been negative towards Germans. It's not all their fault. You know, every country did the same. Um, so, um, let's have a look. What else does it say about them? Um, there were 120,000 uh, 
total Prussian nationals with 270,000 Whoa, where are we reading? Really? Order of battle, right. Uh, fielding up to 120,000 uh, men from a total national Prussian army of 270,000. So that's nearly un just under half were Landwehr mm. um, from your whole army. So you, you are more likely to see Landwehr than you are regular troops generally because you have to take into account cavalry and stuff like that. And cannon crew. And gunners, um, mm. postillions, all the rest that goes into making it work. Um, occasionally ill-trained, but more often than not, eager to, uh, to get to grips with the enemy. D again, depends where the regiment's raised from, what combat experience it has, what it wants to do. If it's Age the, as well. Yeah, if it comes from the French border, they probably couldn't wait to fight the French. If they came from the eastern border, they were probably more worried about the Russians over the border. So if they came from the capital, they wouldn't really want to get involved yeah. because they haven't well, experienced from, any yeah, of it. Yeah, people from Berlin were just lazy yeah. sausage eaters, weren't they? <laughs> Never put any work in. Yeah. Um, they should be quite uh, quite variable in performance on the tabletop. Yeah, you can have to. I would assume the rules do represent that if you uh, put Landwehr on. Uh, they have low marksmanship due to poor training. Quite true. Um, most often, um, these guys would only get to fire one musket ball during basic training. Yeah. You look at the British, would f fire, tw was it 25 musket balls a day mm. in training? 25? Uh, the Germans would fire one and that was it. That's your gun, <laughs> your rifle, you're done, off to barracks with you. Um, yeah. Again, how much money does a, a, a local German town... They're not getting it from the German government, the Prussian government. They're getting it from uh, their local town. Um, can you afford a powder store for your no. town? Yeah. So um, uh, um, the Elbe is probably going to have quite a few spare powder kegs knocking around. But if you live in Leipzig, you don't even have a magazine there. You have to buy it from another state. So <laughs> you're going to be in trouble. Um... Uh, others inspired by martial glory or hatred of the French. Didn't we just mention that? Mm. <laughs> uh, could, be the, uh, could be the impetus. Uh, eager to, uh, to close and avenge the wrongs with a bayonet. Um, yeah, as I said, if you live on the French border, you've probably grown up hating French. And some bits of Germany, uh, sorry, some bits of Prussia had been part of France and stuff. And, and it's all very complicated. It's, 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 uh, the, the borders around around um, the borders between what became Germany and France were very very. One town might be French one day, and then a month later it might be German, and you know it, it, it's, it's all very complicated. Right up to the end of the Second World War, the French nicked a bit of German territory, and said this is ours, which wasn't theirs before the war. But they said it's ours now because we won the war. Mm. And the Americans had to point out to the French that they didn't win the war. It was the Americans and British who won the war, thank you very much. And the French had it apart. Or when they did take part, they were fighting on both sides. Um, anyway, uh, that was Frankfurt, I believe. Um, which the, the de Gaulle demanded was French, didn't he? That was after the Second World War? No. Yeah, the, the French said that they owned it. And they even occupied it at one point and said it's ours. Um, right. Uh, how did they fight? Initially, they were short falling muskets. Didn't we just mention that? Did mm -hmm. we? Did I mention that? Um, which were equipped to recruit, so only the best trained or capable of men had that weapon. Again, a lot would have um, brought their own weapon. Um, if you lived in a rural area, um, you, you probably had a musket or something, or, or some form of firearm, and so you would probably bring your own gun. You might be shooting a gun, but you might bring your own because you'd actually know how to use it. So the thing about firing one musket ball, some people own their own. Um, things were so dismal that many units were issued with eight foot pikes. Yeah, you're in trouble if you, if you back down to pike warfare. <laughs> um, again, I will defend the Germans for some reason. Uh, the Russians also fielded huge regiments of pikes during the Napoleonic War. You never see them on the gaming table, but yes, the Russians did use massed pikemen because they ran out of muskets and they are a lot of Russians. Just, there are so many Russians, it's silly. These never run out of Russians. You know, poor old Napoleon marched all over Russia trying to kill Russians 
And there were more Russians when he got to the end. So it's just Russians everywhere. It's constantly Russians. Can't get rid of them. Uh, if you're gonna do if you're gonna do uh, Napoleonic Wars in Russia, just buy twelve boxes of Russians and one box of French, and that will be about equal. Yeah. Uh, don't get me started on Austrians. There's just as many <laughs> Austrians as there were Russians. <laughs> There's so many Austrians. Oh, actually, talk about Austrians. Um, spoil it. Um, Austrians. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah, it's, it's just great. Uh, we, we like Austrians, don't we? Um, but we haven't got any Russians yet. We need to think about Russians. Don't we? Yeah, we're currently doing one side of the I know border. We can, we'll I do know. the other side of the border later. Yes, we'll, we'll deal with the West for <laughs> now. I haven't even got British yet. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, again, I think uh, off the top of my head, line rear regiments were the same as line regiments. They're divided into a number of companies. The first company been the light com no the the was it first fourth company were like uh, were regu regular companies. Then you had a light company. Which meant really nothing to Landwehr. It just meant that they were the guys you didn't want in the battle. They were just the guys you sent to fetch and carry stuff and scout out ahead. I assume the young boys. Um, and then you had your reserve company as well, which was supposed to, when your companies got knocked down during battle, your reserve company would send the troops to fill those gaps. I think that's how the Landwehr worked. It's how the Hanoverians worked. Um, and they're practically German. That's it. So, that's it. Yeah. Anyway, that's it. It's awesome, and I, th these are going to be great. I'm going to th these figures. I just love them. I just why can't all <laughs> figures be like this? It's it's great. Uh, can't wait. That's it. Over to you. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe, and comment down below what you think of the Prussian Landwehr Regiment by Black Powder. And as a aside, I'm going to find this picture online, and I'm going to use it as my screensaver because I love those guys. <laughs> just look at them. They're great. You got the weird enthusiastic guys there. They're idiots. No, no one likes them. And you got me. <laughs> you <laughs> Notice that guy's so wounded there. He's just oh, yeah, got a bullet in his head. He's already been shot. They haven't even got to the battlefield yet. <laughs> that's that's what happened to the bullet. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Anyway, um, that's it. Uh, it's a goodbye from me. And goodbye from him. Goodbye. <laughs>